Hi everyone. Welcome to the session today. I am Dunit Danushka, a senior developer advocate from Red Panda. In this session, I'll introduce you to the concepts of user-facing analytics and I'll walk you through the process of designing and building a real-time user-facing analytics dashboard with Apache Pino, Red Panda, and Streamlit. All right, let's get started. Let's first see what does it mean by user-facing analytics. The origin of data visualization dates back to the 17th century, where people use it for mapping purposes and recording their location landmarks. But today, it has come a long way from there, and it exists in many forms. For example, today we have these business intelligent dashboards, and also it exists in the form of exploratory data analysis tools. We consider data visualization as the last mile of data analytics, where we use it to communicate results or insights to a mass audience through a more clear and visually appealing manner. Traditionally, data analytics has been restricted to the internal power users of your organization. For example, the dashboards you saw earlier was used by the data analysts and uh, C-suite executives who used to make the ultimate business decisions. But today we see analytics is coming out of the organizational boundaries and they are hitting the end users of your organization. Let's have a look. This phenomenon is called user-facing analytics where the end users of your application gets access to the operational insight so that they can make timely, accurate and improved business decisions and they can make their business more profitable. We can find more practical examples for user-facing analytics out there. For example, if you consider Uber Eats, the restaurant manager will get a real-time dashboard to monitor what's going on with its, uh, their rest restaurant. So in this dashboard, he can track different uh, critical KPIs, like how many orders I'm getting right now, what's my uh, current revenue, and why these orders are not moving in the processing pipeline, likewise. And then when we consider LinkedIn, we have this who viewed my profile, where it gives you a real-time notification whenever someone visits your profile. As we progress through the talk, I'll talk about uh, the process of uh, designing and building a user-facing analytics dashboard. But before going there, let me bring you uh, the three challenges of building such a dashboard. First challenge is the latency. Since you're opening up your dashboards or analytics infrastructure to the external audience, they should load faster. That means the underlying operational database, analytics database, must uh, return query results in ultra low latency. Typically, the latency ranges should be uh, under sub-second uh, range. And then we have throughput or the concurrency. Since you are exposing your analytics infrastructure to the external facing audience, there can be millions of concurrent users trying to load the dashboard at the same time. So the underlying analytics infrastructure should be able to withstand high query throughputs. And then finally, we need to consider about the freshness of your data. The metrics we compute from this analytics should be relevant and should be fresh. Now let's try to design a simple but minimal user-facing dashboard from scratch. So we can always start from a Stroman solution and work our way back until we find the perfect solution. Let's begin. First component is the UI or the front end. So this is where your users will see the metrics and the visualization on their screens. So this could be either a a web application, like a single page application, or a mobile application. So you can use technologies like React, uh, Next.js, and also a Python-based visualization frameworks like Streamlit to build this kind of uh, techno applications. And then this front end fetches uh, analytics from the underlying uh, OLAP database. So the key requirement here is the underlying database must be able to run uh, complicated OLAP queries like uh, aggregations and filters on vast number of records and it should return results in on time. So the typical choice would be a data warehouse. 
But here, we don't usually recommend connecting your front end directly to the OLAP database. So instead of that, we bring in an API gateway in between. So with API gateway, we can offload the rudimentary tasks like uh, API authentication, uh, caching, uh, rate limiting, and protocol transformation sort of things. And then finally, we have a, a remaining question. How do we load this operational data into this data warehouse? This is where the ETL process comes in. You know, traditionally we use these ETL processes uh, just to extract data from uh, transactional systems in periodic manner, you know, the batch things, and then we uh, munch this data through a couple of uh, distributed processing systems like uh, Spark and Hadoop, and then we produce pre-aggregated and uh, denormalized views, and we finally write that down to the OLAP database. And then we have our analytics ready, and then it is exposed to the uh, front end. So this is the minimal solution uh, we have uh, at, the, at this point. It works for some extent, but certainly there are some gaps we can find. For example, we need to make it fast. If you use a traditional data warehouse as your OLAP database, you will have a latency problem. Typically, the latency ranges of data warehouses uh, can vary from the single digit seconds to minute or even to hours, depending your, on your data workload, right? So we really need to make it faster. Second, we'll have a problem with uh, loading data. So for example, if you use these traditional ETL jobs, you'll have to uh, you know, wait until you uh, finish running the ETL job. So, There'll be a significant lag between the event time and the time we produce or time we see metrics on the screen. So that is also not good. So having that in mind, let's try to design a real-time user-facing dashboard with Apache Pino. First of all, let's see what, what is Apache Pino. Apache Pino is a real-time distributed OLAP data store designed to answer OLAP queries with low latency. Remember the term, low latency. So Apache Pino was created in uh, LinkedIn uh, just to power, uh, you know, to power the who viewed my profile. But today we can see Pino has been de uh, deployed in production by many organizations to run their latency sensitive real-time analytics workloads. Now let's see why we should use Apache Pino instead of the traditional data warehouse we saw in the earlier slide solution. So there are three reasons to consider. First, we have the speed. That means the latency. Pino is capable of delivering consistent latency SLAs even if your data volume grows. So usually uh, the typical latency SLA falls in millisecond range, so you can get a good user experience. Secondly, the throughput. Pino is capable of uh, delivering a consistent query throughput or queries per second, even if the data volume grows. And then we have data freshness. Apache Pino has been designed to consume or ingest data from real-time data sources like Apache Kafka, Apache Pulsar, and Red Panda, etc. So it can consume data as they arrive and then turn them into segments and then uh, make them queryable within a few seconds. By that way, you can generate insights just uh, after a few seconds of the ingestion. So all these three features will make Apache Pino an ideal choice for building user-facing applications. Now that we know Apache Pino and its capabilities, let's go back to the drawing board and redesign our solution with Apache Pino with in mind. The new solution is based on the event-driven architecture. So we model every state changes happen in the source system as a discrete and immutable event. So now we have uh, source systems producing asynchronous events and they get ingested into streaming data platforms in a synchronous manner. Everything happens in real time. So the, here you have multiple choices for uh, your streaming data platform, for example, uh, the default choice is Apache Kafka, as we saw. And then there are a couple of other options like Apache Pulsar and Red Panda, AW Kinesis as well. 
Once you have these events landing in the streaming data platform, you can bring in Apache Pino. So you can do that by configuring Apache Pino to ingest from a, a streaming data platform of your choice. So ideally, you should do that by uh, defining a schema and a table in uh, Apache Pino. So the table definition should point you to the uh, location of the streaming data platform with uh, specifying things like the broker URL, the topic to consume, and uh, the offset location, etc. Soon after Pino starts consuming from that uh, topic, it will convert the data into a columnar format and uh, store that in segments. And then it is available for querying. So that's the beautiful thing. So once you have this table, uh, data ingested into Pino, you can expose it to the outside or the front end through the API gateway. So there are a couple of ways you can do that. First option is through the REST APIs. So Apache Pino comes with the REST API. So uh, if you are building an application like single level page application or something like that, you can directly call uh, that REST API. And the second option is through its Python API interface. So Pino provides this Pino DB Python driver. So if you use, uh, if you build Python dashboard like Streamlit, then you can directly invoke uh, Pino uh, through that Pino DB Python driver. And then uh, there are other couple of options like JDBC, if you are planning to build a Java-based uh, front-end as well. All right, let's see everything in action. Here I put together a small demo uh, to showcase everything, uh, including uh, Apache Pino, Red Panda, and Streamlit. Here what we are going to do is, we are going to consume the uh, a feed of recent edits for Wikipedia over server sent events. So for that, I uh, came up with a simple Python script. And then as soon as I consume the events, I write it down to the uh, Red Panda, which is our streaming data platform. When events are produced to Red Panda, we can bring in Apache Pino. So there we can configure Apache Pino by uh, defining a real-time table and a schema to ingest the uh, chain stream. And then we can build a Python based dashboard to visualize the recent edits done to the, all the Wikipedia articles in real time. For that, we'll use Streamlit. Streamlit will be connecting to Apache Pino through the Pino DB Python driver and it will refresh itself as more data comes in. Now let's have a walkthrough of the code. All right, let's have a look. So in this demo, everything is available in Docker Compose file. So you can see uh, the log is printed here. So you can see everything, including uh, Apache Pino and Red Panda running in here. And then uh, we have uh, Python event producer, like I mentioned in the uh, diagram. So this Python script consumes events from the server sent events endpoint uh, exposed by Wikipedia. And then, uh, then it transforms the event and uh, publishes it to the Red Panda, which is our streaming data platform here. Then I have already created a table uh, and a schema in Pino. So in the browser, you can go into, you can log into the Pino console and can just see the wiki events table already created. Here you can see the uh, schema uh, with the different columns and their types. And then you can see it's getting, uh, it has already been populated. You can just query it ad hoc. You can see different, uh, you know, uh, fields like comments made by different users, things like that. And then in the terminal, we have another uh, tab, which is our Streamlit dashboard, which is already up and running. Uh, so I can use this command streamlit run this uh, streamlit slash app dot pi to get this up and running. So this dashboard contains all the necessary codes to pull in the metrics from uh, Apache Pino, transform it, and then uh, render that on the dashboard. So finally, we can see, have a look at the streamlit dashboard. Here it is. So in the overview, you can see three key metrics how many changes have been made right now for in the past 
few seconds and how many users are currently engaging in editing the uh, content or articles and then from how many domains the changes are coming from. So those are the top three metrics you can see. You might have noticed this uh, upward and downward arrows here. So currently it's pointing downwards. That means the current metric is has been reduced compared to the last few seconds. And then here you can see uh, the uh, variation of these metrics over the time. So you can see uh, everything is getting updated in real time, so which is good. And then here you can see the recent changes made by users uh, along with their dimensions like domain, title, and uh, username in the recent uh, changes feed. In Streamlit, you can configure the dashboard to be refresh automatically. So currently it is set to uh, two seconds. That means every two seconds, the dashboard refreshes itself. All right, that's about it. Now that you have seen the demo, now let's try to wrap things up. User-facing analytics is how organizations are democratizing analytics across all user levels. Gone are the days where analytics is only restricted to the internal power users of your organization. But today, you can see your end users are using uh, operational analytics to make improved and timely business decisions. Implementing user-facing analytics is quite challenging at some times because you need to pay most attention to uh, ensure the scalability, freshness of data, and the throughput is maintained. But with Apache Pino and its ecosystem, you can utilize it to build user-facing analytics dashboard at scale. Right. That's all I had in my mind to share with you today. Thanks for joining the session. You can find me at Twitter, Medium, and LinkedIn. Thank you and have a good day.